Hey everybody, it's Alyssa. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Alyssa and I do a bunch of different types of videos on this channel, but today I'm doing a different type of video. I'm actually doing more of like a fitness exercise video and I don't really do that on here, but like I said in my, I think, water video is that I want to try to do more fitness challenges and film it to kind of give me more motivation and to give you guys more motivation. So if you didn't know, I am currently in the process of trying to lose about 30 pounds I started at 160 pounds and I'm working to getting around 130 and I am currently at a hundred and fifty three the day that I am filming this intro. So I have lost about seven pounds so far and it's been about two to three weeks since starting like a dedicated fitness and eating better routine. So I don't know if you're like me, but I hate exercising. I hate the gym because I have social anxiety. So I don't like being around other people and working out and sweating profusely. I am also pretty cheap when it comes to a gym membership. I feel like gym memberships are pretty expensive, especially the ones around me. And especially when you're like a newbie when it comes to working out, working out in front of a bunch of other people who usually know what they're doing is really intimidating and scary. And let's not forget that we're in the middle of a pandemic and going to the gym right now is probably not the safest and smartest thing to be doing. So this video may be for you. I'm trying something a little different and I have been doing it for about two weeks now. So I'm gonna kind of give you guys um, an idea of what this video is about. So I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the Peloton exercise bike on ads, on commercials before. I recently started seeing commercials for the Peloton bike and it looked really cool. I looked it up online and I was like, wow, this bike is really awesome and it would be quiet for an apartment and it would just be really nice. And then I looked at the price and it was over $2,000. So your girl don't have that money. I don't have $2,000 to drop on an exercise bike. If you do, go ahead and just go ahead and get the Peloton bike. If I had that money, I would probably buy one too. But it's basically a exercise bike that has like a flat screen TV hooked to it and you also have to pay like a membership for all of these trainers to teach you. You can join classes. There's a lot of things that you can do on Peloton and you also have to buy like the shoes for it and then like there's a kit that you can buy that comes with like a mat, shoes, weights, and everything and it's like $2,200 or something like that. So I saw this Peloton and I was like there's no way I can afford this at all. So I looked up on YouTube to other people using the Peloton and I came across a couple videos of people basically doing this thing called a Peloton hack where basically you use a really cheap bike and you hack it to do all of the things that a Peloton bike can do and that is what I did. So I love bike riding. Bike riding is something that I've loved ever since I was a kid but I can't have an actual bike because I live in an apartment so I don't really have anywhere to store it. I could store it outside but I already have a lot of stuff outside on my patio so having a bike is just not what I really can have right now. So having an indoor bike is even better. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did this hack and how it works. So basically I spent under $230 for everything and I can do the exact same thing that the Peloton bike can do. 200 compared to 2000, I think I saved a lot of money there and I'm gonna show you how I did it and what my experience is like and if I lost any weight, if I got fit, anything like that. So first I'm gonna show you guys all of the things that I bought in my thought process through it first so I can kind of give you an idea of what you need to buy. I will have links down below for everything that I am talking about in this video. I'm not too sure if any of these things are gonna be in stock by the time I post this video because a lot of exercise items go out of stock really fast right now, but I will put the links for the stuff I am talking about down below. So firstly, I had to think about what was good for me. So I knew that I needed a smaller exercise bike that would be able to fold away and go nicely in a corner of my apartment. As you can see, I actually have it sitting back here behind this chair near the front door because that's the only place I have to store it. And it folds up really nicely and I can just put it away when I'm done and it doesn't take up any space. The Peloton bike, you have to basically put in one place and keep it up all the time. So if you don't have a place to keep a bike all the time, a foldable bike will probably be good for you. So here is the bike that I purchased. It was like $150 or $130 or something like that. And I looked at reviews on a bunch of different bikes and there were some awesome bikes that were a little bit more expensive, but they didn't fold. So I just went ahead and went with a cheaper alternative just in case this bike ended up being something that I didn't want to do anymore. I didn't want to spend tons of money on a bike. So I spent a couple days researching a lot of the cheaper foldable ones and I decided to go with the one that 
that I bought. So I will put some footage on the screen of me and my dad building it. It was actually super easy to build. We built it in probably about less than 30 minutes. It was really easy. It's a lot easier if you have another person. It's definitely possible to build it yourself, but it is pretty heavy. It's about 40 to 50 pounds. I do kind of have to drag it across my floor when I want to set up and use it because it's kind of heavy for me. So just keep that in mind. It is a bit heavy and the box was pretty big. It didn't actually fit in my small car. I had to get my parents to use their car to bring it to me because I couldn't, first of all, carry it up the three floors of stairs that I have at my apartment, but it also wouldn't fit in my car. So even though I got a smaller bike, it was still pretty heavy. And then, okay, so you have the bike and the bike I bought has a little screen on it where it like measures your calories and your time and your pulse and everything. That reader is not very accurate on the bike that I bought. So if you're wanting to buy a bike that has a screen that has all that stuff on it, the bike I bought is probably not gonna be for you because it is very inaccurate. I don't even look at it at all. But the things you need to turn it into a Peloton bike are a couple just little things. First thing you need is this thing called a cadence reader. So this is a Wahoo cadence reader. It was about 40 to $50. And if you don't know what cadence is, it's basically how fast you're pedaling. And when you're doing the Peloton exercises, the instructor will tell you what cadence you need to be at. So if you don't have a cadence reader, you're not gonna really know how to do the exercise because you don't know how fast you're actually going. This reader is really tiny. I mean, it's like this big. It has little straps that are included with it. You hook it to an app on your phone with Bluetooth and you basically attach the reader to the inside of the pedal of your bike. And as you are pedaling on the screen on your TV or your iPad or whatever you're using, it will tell you what your cadence is so you can go along with the instructor. So I definitely, definitely recommend this. You don't need it, but if you want it to be like a Peloton and to be able to follow the Peloton instructor, then you're gonna need it. Next, if you want to be like the Peloton, you're going to need something that is going to read your heart rate. So I personally have an Apple Watch, as you can see here, and this detects my heart rate. So while I am biking, I can make sure that first of all, I'm not pushing myself too hard where I'm gonna give myself a heart attack and I can make sure that I have a steady heart rate. And you can also see how high your heart rate goes as you're working out. Mine has gone to about like 190 at the highest so far. And there has been a couple times where my watch just told me I need to calm down and take a break because my beats per minute and my like heart is just going too fast. So it's really good to have some type of heart monitor. You can buy heart monitors on Amazon for pretty cheap that can like wrap around your waist or go on your arm that are not Apple watches. You don't have to buy an Apple watch to be able to use this, but I already had one. And basically my watch hooks to my Peloton app and it'll send all my data from the watch to the Peloton app so I can keep everything together. And you'll see that a little bit later as I'm exercising while doing the setup that the heart monitor and the cadence monitor will show up on the TV screen while you're working out. And of course, for it to be like a Peloton, you need to get the Peloton app. So the app is on your phone and it is free. I have it right here. So basically the app is free, but to be able to use the app, you have to pay $12 a month, which is super cheap compared to the membership on the Peloton bike, which is like 50 or 40 or $50 a month. And you have to pay for it to have the bike. $12 a month is nothing. And you also get a two month free trial beforehand. So I'm still in the two month free trial. And then after that, you only pay $12 a month compared to a $2,000 bike with a $40 membership every month. So obviously the Peloton app is not going to have all of the things that the Peloton bike has, but it's definitely enough for you to exercise. So what I'm doing right now is a class called the Mastering the Basics Cycling Class. And it is a six week program and I am currently on week two. And the first week you basically learn how to use the bike and it teaches you all of the terms that they use and everything like that. So there's a lot of cool things. There's classes you can do. There's just featured programs you can do with certain types of music. They have pop, they have rock, they have 80s, 90s. There's so many different types of music genres that you can do on here as well. And you can also follow other people. So here is my username. It's Alyssa Nicole 52 So if you guys have the Peloton app and you'd like to add me and we can track each other's progress, I will have that down below. 
below. And then when you're done working out, it'll send your workout to this little page called workouts and you can click any workout that you did. It'll tell you what your instructor's name is, how many calories you lost, your average cadence and everything like that. So you have all of your measurements in an app together. So obviously you're going to need the Peloton app to be able to do the Peloton exercises. So that's all you need to be able to make a cheap bike into a Peloton. You just need a bike, a cadence reader, some type of heart monitor and the Peloton app. All of that for me came out to less than $230, not including the Apple Watch that I already had. So if you're buying a heart monitor, it may be close to like 250 to 300, also depending on how much you spend on a bike, which is way cheaper than a year gym membership and buying the Peloton bike. There's also additional things you can buy. So the Peloton's pedals, you have to have specific biking shoes that actually clip into the pedals of the Peloton. I don't have that. I just have straps that wrap around my feet and those work fine for me, but you can also buy pedals that you can take these pedals out, put the new pedals in and then get biking shoes if that's something you want to do. And then you can also buy butt pads for the seats because the seats can kind of get uncomfortable, but that's additional things that you don't really need. So I am just gonna go ahead and go over to past footage that I have filmed showing you guys how I set everything up. So I just wanna say real fast that basically I just set my bike up in the morning or night whenever I'm doing my exercise. I will put a little exercise mat underneath my bike. I recommend buying one for sure because you're sweating a lot while you're doing the workout and I would hate for your sweat to be like in your carpet or on your floor. It's just kind of gross. It's nice to have a mat underneath your bike to catch all of your sweat. <laughs> I also forgot to say that you actually need a phone or an iPad or TV or something like that as well to have the Peloton experience. I use my phone and my iPad and I also bought a little mount for my phone and iPad that I hooked to the bike, which you guys will see that basically I can look at while I'm exercising. But personally, I use my phone as like the base, but I actually airdrop it to my Apple TV and I can see everything on my Apple TV on the big screen. So I'm gonna go to the future and let you guys see what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain without you guys being able to see but I set everything up and then I just start my exercise and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna send you guys over to past footage that I did and then I will come back in the end in the two weeks and let you guys know how I'm feeling about the bike and if any progress was made. Okay guys, it is day one and I am about to attempt to ride my bike for the first time and it's gonna be interesting to see how it goes and going along with the Peloton app. I'm going to aircast it to my TV and I'll show you guys a little bit what it looks like after I'm done just so I can kind of get an idea of everything myself and then the next couple days I'll film a little bit more better for you. <laughs> okay guys, I just finished my very first ride ever on this bike using the Peloton app. I did a 20 minute beginner ride. Um, I had to end up using my phone because the iPad doesn't have as many classes as the phone app has for some reason because on the phone app when you go to classes and programs you can choose this program called the Mastering the Basics Cycling right here and it has programs and each week you have a certain video you watch each day so that's really great for a beginner like me but this program is not on the iPad which is is weird, but I just ended up setting my phone in my little iPad stand that I bought and I just airplayed it to the TV. So the first ride I did was a 20 minute beginner ride by, I think her name is Tunde. I hope I don't say her name wrong. She was absolutely freaking amazing. I've never done any type of like cycling class or anything like that. She was so freaking motivating. Like she almost made me feel like crying at the end because she was so motivating. I loved her. Like seriously, I want to do like a lot more of her rides because I really loved her personality and just how like upbeat she was. And it was like a motivational speaker talking to you while you're working out. I honestly didn't even feel like I was working out. It was awesome. So in that 20 minute ride, I lost 192 calories and my average cadence was about 70. I'm not gonna lie, this was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, I knew it would be hard, but I didn't realize how fast you actually have to pedal to make sure your cadence is the same cadence as the instructor. And my legs are her pretty bad. The only thing I've noticed is that my butt hurts really badly from this seat. 
Unfortunately, the seat is more wide than it is going out. So I basically have my butt hanging just on this tip part right here to be able to reach the pedals because the pedals are really far forward, but I'll get into that more when I like kind of do a review of the bike at the end of the video. That's just something I've noticed from the first ride is that this seat is not super comfortable. I mean, it's comfortable when you're sitting all the way back onto it, but when you're riding, you kind of have to like be on the tip of it and my butt is like sweaty and it's hurting pretty badly. So I may try to see if I can get some type of like padding or something to go there. And then after the 20 minute workout, I still felt like trying something else, which is very rare for me after a 20 minute workout. Usually after 20 minutes, I just want it to be over. But I decided to do one of the scenic rides. To be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I just wanted to see what it was like. So I did a 10 minute Santiago scenic ride and basically I was just riding through Chile and it was really funny. I really definitely recommend trying it out for yourself because I don't know how they film those videos, but all of the people around them are just staring at this camera as it goes by them in confusion. There was also one part where this couple was literally making out on the top of this mountain and the Peloton biker just kind of rode by while these people were just making out and it was kind of funny. But in that 10 minute ride, I lost 77 calories and I turned up the resistance on that ride at the end while we were like going up the hills and it was definitely a lot harder. I worked out for 30 minutes, which is the most I have worked out uh, ever, honestly, since starting to work out and I am sweating, but I don't feel unmotivated. I don't feel like crying like I normally do, I feel good. So I'm really excited to do the next one tomorrow. Okay guys, it is night two and I'm about to show you guys how I ride the bike. So I'm just going to like show you how I set it up and this might change as the days keep going. So I already put it all you know, out. I have been folding it and putting it behind right here because that's the only space in my apartment that I have to put it. It is pretty heavy, I'm not gonna lie. It takes a lot of my strength to be able to pull it over here, but it's fine. I want to get a thicker mat for right here, but for right now, I'm just using this $5 mat from Five Below and I just have the bike set up. So normally if I was doing like just some random Peloton exercises, I would use my iPad and hook my iPad right there. But since I'm doing a program that's only on the phone app for some reason, I I just put my phone right here like that and it doesn't fall off even though it's not for a phone. And I put my TV remote right there just to adjust the volume of the screen just in case it, you know, the TV gets too loud or something like that. And then I have my Apple Watch on and ready to exercise. So oh, keep in mind, you might wanna keep your water near as well. Um, there's not really a stopping point where you can drink any water, but just in case you need it, I kind of have it near where I can reach for it. Also be careful with animals. I make sure that my dogs are put away before I start exercising because their heads get hit because they're not smart enough to just not move their heads away from the pedals. So just be careful with animals near just so you don't hurt them. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is sit on the bike. So I'm not gonna lie, it is a struggle to step up onto the bike, but once you get up here, it's pretty easy. And then I just stick my shoes in these little straps right here. I don't feel like I'm not secure in them at all when I was riding last night. And here's the little resistance thing right here. So I will kind of go over that like later in the video trying to like explain it to you guys, but this is basically just how hard it is to pedal. So like right here is basically just maybe riding on a bike, like on a straight path, no hills or anything. And then eight, it's like you're going straight up a mountain. So if that makes any sense. Let's just go ahead and get started. I have my Apple TV up. You can also cast with like Roku TV through the Peloton app. But like I said, I'm going to be air casting it so I can see my heart rate and everything. So I'm going to open the Peloton app on my phone here. I'm going to go ahead and click screen mirroring and I'm going to click my living room TV and it'll start mirroring my phone up there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that program that I did yesterday, the Mastering the Basics, and I am going to day two, which is a 20 minute low impact ride. And it is, yeah, obviously cycling. So I'm just going to press start, I'm going to turn it sideways and set it right there. So normally if you have an iPad or just a phone or whatever, you can just watch it from there. But if you aircast it to a TV, it's a lot bigger. So if you want to connect your cadence, you click this button right here and it'll look for your cadence device. You do have to like pedal a little bit so it can see it. You can see my heart rate is being read by my watch and the cadence is being read by me pushing the pedals. So I'm just gonna press play. And as you can see, the instructor's on the TV. You can see in the corner there that it's 
doing my heart rate and my cadence. So I'm just gonna bite. Oh my gosh, guys, day two of that program was so intense. Like the sweat was like pouring down my body. My legs are like noodles right now. I don't know why it was so hard. So the instructor today's name was Emma Lovewell and I really liked her as well. I didn't like her as much as the girl beforehand, but I, I don't think it's because of her personality or anything. I think it was just because the exercise yesterday was more upbeat, more motivational, more you can do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one was a low impact ride. So it was like slow pop music. It was supposed to be relaxing, but you're doing more like resistance pushing. The first one that I did yesterday difficulty wise was like a four or five out of 10. And the one today was definitely like a six or seven out of 10 for sure. I'm definitely feeling it. I'm not gonna do another <laughs> workout. I'm just gonna follow the one that was recommended for today. Okay, so I just finished day two out of week two of this six week program and it was a 15 minute 80s ride. And I was like, oh yeah, 15 minutes. That means it's shorter, it won't be as bad, but it was actually the worst workout out of all of them, mainly because it was the first exercise of this whole class that you had to come out of the saddle and act like you were like pedaling to climb up a hill. So I am sweating like, crazy. That one was probably the most intense so far. That was the first one where I had to like stop and breathe because I couldn't keep going. Like <laughs> most of them I really pushed through it, but that one. But how I'm feeling so far in about the middle of week two, I feel really good. I have lost some weight, but I'll go over the measurements and everything at the end. My butt doesn't really hurt too much anymore. The first day this seat hurt my butt and now it doesn't really hurt at all. The only thing different about this seat is that I wish instead of it being so wide this way that it was longer because to reach the pedals I feel like I have to sit on like the very very edge of the seat right here and it's not very big so it's kind of uncomfortable that it's harder to climb on this bike than like a peloton because pedals on this bike go forward and the pedals on a peloton peloton bike are right underneath you like a normal bike is so it is a lot harder to climb if I give myself a little bit more credit because the pedals are like forward and I have to like kind of go forward to be able to do it. But other than that, I am truly getting a great workout. <laughs> I'm about to do the last day of the Peloton two week challenge or whatever. I'm still gonna keep doing it after two weeks, but I wanted this video to be two weeks. So today is the last exercise day for the two weeks that I have started this Peloton bike. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start biking and I will check back in with you guys when I am done. And I will let you guys know how I feel about having it and everything like that and we'll see if it was actually worth the money. Okay, so I'm here for my final thoughts and I woke up this morning with this alien on my forehead. So please try to ignore that. I didn't want to put makeup on it just for an outro. And I've also been laying on my face if you can't tell. <sighs> I am going to give you my final thoughts of this Peloton hack and indoor cycling for two weeks. Overall, I 100% recommend doing indoor cycling. It is so great and it's it truly busts your butt, but in a great way. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my weight and measurements real fast. So if you get triggered by that, um, you may wanna click out, but I actually gained two pounds. I started at 155 and yesterday morning when I weighed myself, I was 157. It's fine. My weight fluctuates by a couple pounds all the time, but I feel like I've definitely gained a lot of muscle and toned up a little bit because my legs 
and my stomach look smaller. I even had my boyfriend mention it and I don't know if he was just doing it out of the kindness of his heart, but um, about two days ago, I was like changing and he goes, wow, your legs look way different. So I don't know. So final thoughts, I, like I said, I absolutely love the bike that I got and everything that I got for it. Would it be nice to have a Peloton? Of course, but that's just not something I can have right now. So the one that I have will do me well until I can actually get a fancier bike. Doesn't necessarily have to be a Peloton, but something similar. In the past two weeks, I have noticed a huge difference in my strength and endurance. The first couple days of cycling were a struggle. I, oh, I mean, I was motivated and I got through without taking any breaks, but it was really hard to get through those 20 minutes. And this past week, the 20 minutes were pretty easy, even though the, the cycling like got a little bit harder harder with each class. I wasn't really like dying and my heart rate wasn't getting as high as it usually does. My legs definitely feel like they have gotten a lot stronger. One thing I have to say is that I really love the Peloton instructors. I think they are all so motivating and literally just so great, like seriously. There's not one instructor that I didn't like. Of course, there was ones that I liked more than others. My favorite instructors were Tunde and Cody. Cody was the last day of the week two of the little biking challenge and he was amazing. I loved him. The only thing that's kind of eh is the music, but I personally don't really like American pop and like 80s music and it seems like there's a lot of these classes that use 80s music and that's just not really my thing. I grew up listening to it because of my parents and I just don't like it. So the music's kind of iffy but you can always just add your own music if you like. One thing that I noticed with the specific bike that I bought is that if you have pretty long legs, I have pretty long legs, is that when you're doing the uphill climbs where you have to get out of your seat, your knees might hit the pedals because the pedals are so far forward. So if you have have really long legs and you're taller than me, I am 5'6", I recommend maybe getting a different bike when it comes to doing the out of saddle exercises because once you're pedaling, your knees start hitting. And also, of course, if I could change the seat, I would because like I said before, it's too a little too wide this way and not long enough. But I mean, I think you can always just change out a seat if you really want to. It's not that big of a deal though. My butt's never ever sore. It was only sore the first day. Okay, so when the instructors of Peloton are teaching, if you've ever watched a peloton exercise basically they will tell you what your resistance needs to be and what your cadence needs to be and able to get the same output that they are getting so that is why you need the cadence reader and you need something that you can change the resistance on when an instructor is talking about resistance they'll tell you between like one and like 80 or 20 to 30 40 to 50 something like that and the bike that i bought has numbers one two three four five six seven eight so basically what i've done is i've determined that if a peloton instructor tells me to be in between 20 and 30 i will just turn my resistance notch to a two or a three and i've noticed that my legs are going about the same way as they are and i can get my cadence about the same as they're telling me to so it may be nice to get a bike that has numbers on the resistance wheel because that might be easier to determine what kind of resistance you need to be at because I was really um, nervous about that at first because obviously you can't turn the resistance the exact same as a Peloton because you don't have one but it was really easy with my bike I basically just determined that 20 to 30 is a 2 or a 3 or a 40 to a 60 is a 4 to a 6 and I would just choose which one was that I wanted to do so do I think what I spent was worth the $230 or whatever I spent yes 100% I believe what I spent on this bike is worth it. I've already gotten two weeks worth of exercises for like cheaper than probably a gym membership. So I 100% recommend doing this. It has really, really motivated me to work harder on my exercises because I'm doing a workout that I actually enjoy. I have always wanted to work out and get stronger, but I've always been so terrified of the gym and I never really knew what I like to do. And biking is something that I have loved since I was a kid and I really genuinely enjoy it. So I do have to say the second Second week of the this Peloton biking challenge, I was also doing another exercise challenge. So that could have hindered my results a little bit. I don't really know if it did or not. Two videos from now, you guys will be seeing another like fitness exercise challenge. I'm going to be doing the jump rope challenge, so stay tuned for that. And if you don't know what the jump rope challenge is, it's basically where you start start off the first day with a certain amount of jump ropes and you add a hundred each day. I am currently still doing the challenge and I'm dying. So stay tuned for that video. I'm pretty excited for that to come out. I will We'll have links down below for the bike, the cadence reader, literally everything I mentioned in this video.
video I will have a link down before just in case you guys are interested I had a lot of fun doing this challenge and I hope you guys are enjoying these little like health and fitness related videos as well They really motivate me to work harder My channel is not gonna just be fitness and health from now on a lot of people are really kind of getting mad at me because I want to do fitness videos. And last time I checked, this is my channel so I can do what I want. And I also wanted to mention real fast, I haven't really posted this on social media yet, but from now on, I won't really be doing any more witchcraft videos. Any type of witchcraft videos I post, I get a lot of, a lot of hate of people telling me that I'm fake and just literally making fun of literally everything that I do. And it's really hindering me learning more about this craft that I really want to be a part of. So from now on, I if I do a witchcraft video, all of the comments are gonna be turned off and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. I cannot affect my mental health and affect what I want to learn in my life because of other people. So just keep in mind, in the future, there's not gonna be as many witchcraft videos and if there is, the comments are going to be turned off and I'm going to announce this on my social media as well. I have been taking a couple social media breaks and it has really helped my my mental health drastically so I think I'm going to be doing that a lot in the next coming months is just taking like a week off from social media and really just relax from reading hateful comments pretty much every single day now when I go on YouTube I have about 10 to 20 people just being mean to me and like I know it comes with the territory of being a YouTuber but it really does affect my mental health so I just want to let you guys know if I'm not seeing your messages or replies or anything and you're being sweet it's just because I'm trying to not look at all of my comments anymore because it really affects me. I try to heart as many positive comments as I get. Oh, and if you made it this far in the video, leave a little bike emoji down below so I know you made it this far because I feel like this video has kind of been long, I'm not sure. Check out all of my other channels down below. I have a couple different channels and recently I've been uploading a lot on my gaming channel if you guys like video games. I also have all of my social medias down below, my Patreon where I make behind the scenes exclusive content, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, all of that is down below. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.